Hi folks, Toad here with VisorDown.com and welcome to the review of our BMW R80 which we've had on test for two weeks and a bit pissed off because quite frankly I've not been able to ride it because the weather has been absolutely atrocious. As you can see the sun has got his hat on and uh, we've made the most of that so today we've brought it out for a little bit of a, a review, got some filming and some photography done so we're all good very quick high level overview of this particular bike so this is the 2021 r18 this is the first edition bike so these come in at a shade over twenty thousand pounds think about twenty thousand eight hundred pounds you can get the base model um r18 for eighteen nine nine five there or thereabouts um, and this is just a bit more of a blinged up a bit more of a high spec version of the r18 and you also get the obligatory first edition um badging on there as well we have what have we been doing with it not a whole lot to be honest with you i've i've only got a motorcycle don't drive a car so it is my primary and only form of transport is two wheels so i have been pootling about on it going to the shops and so on and so forth but yeah the weather has been absolutely awful so i've not really enjoyed the riding on it today though we have come out we've gone on some really really good roads the best roads um that the midlands has to offer and uh, we've had a little bit of play on it um, and it's been rather good fun as you can see it is a massively unashamedly retro cruiser and it is totally all about the heritage this is a real rose tinted look back at bmw's past this bike um, and they are totally not ashamed of it at all the detailing on it is very very nice the little um pinstriping on the tank and also on the tail of it with the inner thin stripe and the outer thicker stripe really really makes the bike look class it took so much so that a guy who just came over who was uh, working on this little road that we are now he didn't believe that it was a 2021 model he actually thought this was a classic motorcycle which it is not the heart of the bike is of course that 1800 cc engine so let's take a talk about it a little bit more and go on a bit of a deep dive into that at the heart of the BMW R18 is a thumping great boxer twin of 1802 cc in size it's a push rod actuated unit with four valves and one cam per cylinder. Power is a modest 91 bhp while torque is 116 pound foot and is spread as thickly as the Nutella on a fat kid's toast. The delivery is as you'd expect from a ginormous twin cylinder, although the engine does seem to hit the red line quickly, meaning you have to keep on top of your gear shifts. The exhaust note from the stunning looking chrome tailpipes is fairly muted and not much more than a lazy bark regardless of how hard you twist the throttle. It's nice but I always longed for just a bit more Bavarian brawn from the big R18. The bike also comes equipped with three riding modes, rock, roll and rain, although the rock setting is more like a Genesis reunion tour than Guns N' Roses. Each mode adjusts the traction control and engine braking along with the throttle response. So what else do we need to talk about with the R18? Uh, well, let's do suspension and handling. Although I don't know if you call it handling when it's a cruiser, I think it's more road holding. Um, but the suspension on this is a massive thumping great set of front forks, which are very, very retro. They're all kind of shrouded in and they look um, bob on. And we've got a rear monoshock as well. On the standard setup it is quite firm um, the seat doesn't have masses of padding in it so it kind of accentuates that firm ride um, and if you do hit potholes especially big potholes that we've got around in the midlands um, and just kind of send a bit of a jarring shockwave right up your spine which can be a little bit uncomfortable especially if you're not ready for it that said it does handle really really quite well um, it kind of reminds me I don't know if BMW would like me for saying this, but it kind of reminds me of the Harley Davidson FXDR in that it's a really, really muscular bike. You can't, if you want to go fast on it, which you can up to a point, um, you really have to muscle it about and you have to push it down, push it into corners and just basically take it by the scruff of the neck a bit. Um, and it is, it's got a real kind of old school vibe to it, partly because of the, the way the engine's laid out and the fact that the engine's so chuffing big um, that that kind of dominates the riding experience of this bike, just all engine effectively. The bike was almost an afterthought. Um, but it is an enjoyable thing to ride. It's quite tail happy, which I quite enjoy because I quite like getting the, the back end of a bike out, especially something as long as this, because it's like, drifting in your granddad's volvo it's great fun but overall the handling is 
pretty good for anything this long, this low, and this heavy. Um, I want to say there is one point of interest to this bike which I've found really, really good, which on this kind of bike can be a bit of a weak point, um, and that's the braking system. We've got some massive uh, BMW own brand, they'll be made by somebody else, but they're BMW's own brand calipers and huge, great thumping. Uh, discs up front and there is a shed load of power there's not masses of feel through the lever um, you kind of need a full-handed squeeze to get the most out of it you can't really one finger or two finger um, brake on it but once you get into the meat of the lever there is loads and loads of stopping power there and the abs is typically bmw it's just a really really nice system that doesn't feel too intrusive or too overpowering uh, the rear brake as well is excellent really really sharp i do like that again not masses of feel but it's all there i have found the gearbox a little bit hit and miss um it's got quite a short throw on it but it does require a really positive snick up into the next gear or down into the into the one below um i do clutchless shift quite a lot and it has jumped out of gear on me a couple of times but i have a feeling that is probably down to me um not being forceful enough with the lever so i just want to talk very quickly about the comfort of this thing because uh there's a bit of an elephant in the room a bavarian elephant in the room um of course it's a cruiser and when you sit on a cruiser and you've got your arms out in front of you and you're nice low to the ground you kind of have this natural propensity to want to shift your feet forward towards the front axle of the bike where they're going to nestle upon some nice forward controls obviously you can't because you've got about 60 kilos and 60 kilos of metal hanging out the side of the engine um, so you do get on it the first few times that i got on it I, I naturally just forgot that it's a boxer twin and you try and put your feet forward and you have to sort of bring them back and put them on these sort of mid-set foot rests um, i would describe the seating position as it's a little bit like being sat on the toilet which isn't that bad because i quite enjoy sitting on the loo for long periods of time um, but that's because i've got a very high protein diet but it is fairly comfortable for a period of time you do notice after a while that your knee because you can't really put your knee anywhere else you can't really put your leg anywhere else to move it that after an hour on the motorway or something you will be getting really stiff legs especially if it is quite cold that said who is ever going to ride one of these things for that long well they do do a tourer version with panniers and a pillion seat so um, you could actually do some big miles on one one thing that really helps the comfort on this thing it's got heated grips um, and yeah they do work they're typically BMW they get hot really quickly and they stay hot for the whole entire ride which is excellent they also stay on so if you turn the bike off and you come back to it as soon as you turn the ignition on the heated grips will return which is pucker just one other thing as well it doesn't have cruise control um, so it's a cruiser but it doesn't have cruise control so that's a little bit like having a bratwurst without any brat it's just the worst it should have cruise control it's meant for cruising and i don't understand why they didn't put it on there unless i've missed the button it should be dead easy to do it's got you know fly-by-wire throttle so they can sort of stick a bit of software in there that keeps the butterflies open and holds it at constant revs it seems like a real own goal not to fit a bike like this with cruise control so what do we really like about the r18 oh, i chuffing love the way it looks uh, ever since i saw this on the stand at garmish uh, the bmw motor ad days um festival a couple of years ago i thought it looked stunning so happy that bmw kept the look of it just as it is i'm a massive child at heart so i really like the way that it's quite tail happy and you can turn off the traction control and you can just go and have a play and the the way it reacts to drifts and the way it reacts to opening the throttle sort of mid corner it's just really languid and slow and measured and you can just real you can really really play play with it and that's not something you can normally do with bikes that are this this sort of size and this sort of weight um what don't we like about the bmw r18 uh look i might be being cruel here but it's got 91 bhp that's not a lot I mean on something this big yes i know it's got an absolute shed load of torque locked within that motor but torque is only fun for so long and when that peters out you need some power to sort of be coming in at the top end of the rev range to sort of make up for the the lack of torque that you get in at the higher rpms and it's just not really there it seems to bang into a rev limit really 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 early and uh you just if you really really hammer it you do just have to um 
keep on top of the gear changes otherwise you're going to be sat in the uh, hitting the rev limiter all the time in all honesty they could have put an r1200 engine in this bike made the whole thing a little bit lighter and it would have been pokier and it would have probably handled better but am i missing the point of having a big bore 1800 cc cruiser i don't know if only there was another big bore cruiser that had torque and power and looks and was cheaper so would i buy the r18 if i had eighteen thousand nine hundred and ninety five pounds to spend look there is no getting away from the fact that the r18 is a stunning looking thing it oozes class and style and if you want a big bore cruiser with a boxer twin at its heart it really is the only choice that you've got so would i spend my own hard-earned cash on the bike i'm gonna have to have a think about that for a minute Okay, I've thought about it, and for me, if I wanted a massive cruiser with style, attitude, and more importantly for me, ability, I'd be spending my cash on a Triumph Rocket 3. It's around the same price as the big BMW, it looks just as imposing, and when you want to go and play with the sports bikes or super nakeds on a sunny Sunday afternoon, you absolutely can. So, really, this kind of brings me on to my quandary, this kind of internal argument that I've been having with myself over the last few days, especially today after I've actually spent some time on the BMW, because I have really, really bonded with it, more so than I did when I first got it, because I just couldn't enjoy it, I couldn't ride it anywhere, I couldn't get on any decent roads. But I keep on asking myself, would I spend £18,000 on the base model, or £20,000, basically, for the first edition, would I spend my own money on that? And I wouldn't. And the reason is because I could get all of this. Yes, this is achingly beautiful. It's an absolute stunning piece of design. But it talks the talk, whereas this can actually walk the walk. This is a proper full-on motorcycle that you can tour on and you can chuck your passenger on. Um, and of course you've got that two and a half litre, 221 newton metre engine with 165 bhp, not 91 bhp, it's got 165 bhp. But when you don't want to set your hair on fire, you can just poot around town on this thing and it's docile, compliant, comfortable, not too thirsty on fuel as long as you don't take the piss. But you've still got all of the attitude. It makes heads turn, it's eye-catching, it looks good. Yes, I know it's not got all of the chrome and the nickel finish and the heritage and the retro feel of the BMW, but I don't know, I don't think it needs it because I think actually this is more motorcycle. If you were gonna buy a motorcycle that you wanted to look at predominantly and not actually ride, this is a very sound investment. You are gonna spend days looking at it, years looking at it, and you'll never be able to spot all of the little details that BMW have hidden away in there. But if you wanted a motorcycle that you were gonna actually ride and enjoy and go out and explore on, my money's on the, uh, on the rocket through on that one, folks. Anyway, I hope you've liked that video. If you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you stay up to date with all of Visor Down's latest videos. And for all the latest news, reviews and motorcycle features, get yourself over to visordown.com. Thanks for watching, folks. <laughs>